to not want to go to sleep. Um, and then I was getting my things around, and took a break, and I was knitting, and then I realized it was time. It was time for my live video, so I needed to go get ready. So um, today I want to talk about tatting. Nobody signed up for my shuttle tatting course um, starting last week, so I'm just shifting the dates, and um, if you're interested, I'm still going to run it, and um, I will start my shuttle tatting um, course with class one on this Friday instead. So if you sign up for the shuttle tatting class, we're just going to start from this Friday and go three weeks from there. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really like doing tatting. Um, I'll talk to you about like how to read patterns. This happens to be one that I purchased. And hey, Bev. Um, I'll talk about like how to read them and things like that. Um, I had this idea this morning about, um, oh, hey, Cheryl from Saskatchewan. Well, welcome, Canadian friends. I keep seeing this thing about emotional support Canadians, and I really think I need a few. Um, I like having my, my mm -hmm. Canadian friends. Anyway, um, I had this idea. So I had this leftover little dab of, um, sea lace from when I made my Elroy right? This was the Elroy shawl that I did. Um, well, the, I don't know if anybody else joined me, but I did it as a knit along this summer. And I love this stuff. I love Handmaiden. Hey, Handmaidens from Canada love Handmaiden. And I love this sea lace. And I had a dab left over and I thought, man, you know, because I end up with a lot of leftover yarn. I really don't want to waste this, right? And, um, yeah, I hate, I hate wasting, like, really good yarn. And this is silk and sea cell. I don't want to waste this. And, oh, hey, is that Diana? Diana from Spokane. Hi, Diana from Spokane. So, um, I just thought, I wonder if I can tat this. I mean, I was teaching tatting today or showing you tatting or something, right? And I thought, maybe, maybe it would work. So, like, I just finger tatted, which means you just use your hands instead of having a shuttle to hold your thread. And look, look, I have a tiny little tatted thing. It's so cute. And it works. And I think it's pretty nice. So uh, I talked to Tina and I think I'm going to take um, this pattern that I picked out and I'm going to tat it in something else first so I can practice. And then I am going to tat a motif in this silk because I want to see what the drape is like. It might be too drapey, which would mean that it, you know, wouldn't be super appropriate for tatting. But but I want to try it. Like, I kind of want to try it. And it's um, somewhere around like a size 10-ish in terms of um, the thread size, you know, comparison to like tatting threads. So yeah, I think, I think I'm going to try tatting with this. Uh, it's 70% silk and 30% sea cell um, lace weight yarn. Just because I can, right? Just try it. Why not? I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I wanted to show you that. Such a silly thing, I know. Um, and then I thought um, we'll talk a little bit about like the basics of tatting and um, I can get out my big shuttles again. And I also want to talk about where we are on our year of self-care journey. And um, let's see, what else today? Oh, that I won't be here Wednesday because I'm having dental work done. So there will be no Kelly on Wednesday. But Tina will be on on Friday, and I'm trying to set up the events um, like a week or two ahead of time so that you can, you know, kind of get them on your calendar if you want to join in, or you'll know, hey, I need to go check out YouTube or whatever and watch the video later. If you haven't already, make sure that you have hit that like on our Facebook page or the um, thumbs up, which is the follow button for YouTube, so you get notifications about when we go live as well as when we put up new content um, or when we have new videos on YouTube. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, I am also putting little videos up on TikTok and Instagram. So if you want to check us out there, if you want shorter videos, you can check those out. Um, but of course, you're always welcome to follow us with Facebook and YouTube and see what we're doing there. So. Um, yeah, today we're just, we're going to tat a little bit. I'm going to show you kind of some basics, um, some quick basics, and I'll show you some of the thread and projects that I have. I haven't been working on as much tatting because, well, 
Ina likes to run away with my um, tatting thread or my shuttles. She finds it just too interesting. She's very cat-like <laughs> in that respect. Um, but I can't lock her in the bathroom while I'm tatting like I can the cat. So, um, I still think that's allowed, right? Haha, uh -huh. I'm a little funny. Anyway, um, she is letting me knit more. Um, although she, you know, actually yesterday, the cat and my child both grabbed my ball of yarn and tried to take off with it. Different times during the day, but they both did it. So, I mean, what can I say? My two-year-old, very much like a cat. Anyway, um, so just to reiterate, nobody signed up for the class. It started last week, so I'm just going to move it a week. You still have a chance to sign up if you want to do the live video uh, shuttle tatting class where I go over everything in much greater detail than what we're going to touch on here. Um, but we also have a bunch of other classes scheduled, so don't forget that I have... Uh, my if you can knit you can knit lace that's my beginning lace um, I've also put up the intermediate lace um, I put up the Estonian lace and I have to finish writing the booklet for uh, my Shetland lace class and then Tina is also teaching beginning knitting and beginning crochet so um, yeah options there uh, you oh you need to know how to undo tatting to fix mistakes ooh okay so that's something I tatted for like 12 years before I learned how to undo rings and it is not an easy feat, but I will try to demonstrate for you, Diana, how to um, pick out a ring or take apart a ring. Uh, it's, it's something that definitely takes practice and it's always easier if you haven't fully closed the ring than if you have fully closed the ring. So, you know, maybe I'll just show you how to put in and take out a ring. Um, let me grab the big shuttles and see if I have, I don't know if I have any. Oh, I still have some. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, good. And I even have a ring started with this one. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Let me flip the camera around and, uh, mm -hmm. we'll get in close and hang on here. So, let me just snug up to this. Um, you know, <laughs> Diana, of course, it's always easier to not make mistakes. But the thing is, we're human, and mistakes happen. And, of course, you can always cut it out, but then you have the tails and blah, blah, blah. So, um, when it comes to rings and you've closed a ring and it's going to be easier for me to open this ring because I am using a polyester cord so I do need to you know just kind of make you aware of that um okay let me get my bags these are these are actually tatting bags so this one I have a ton of tatting in this one like this is, I have all kinds of tatting in here I'm a little bit ashamed to say that I have I probably just need to buy more shuttles, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was going through this bag and I was trying to find shuttles that didn't have thread on them so I didn't have to clean them off. And I had, like, two. Um, so clearly, <laughs> I need to buy more shuttles because I don't want to clean them off. That's how I end up buying a lot of shuttles. It's like, I don't want to clean off more shuttles, I'll just buy a few more. Because, um, you know, who likes cleaning off their shuttles? Nobody. Who likes starting projects? Me and everybody. Okay, so... When you have a ring and um, you've closed it and you've made a mistake because you needed to maybe join to another ring or um, maybe you forgot to add a pico or you counted wrong and, um, you know, there's only two picos and there were supposed to be like four and you closed your ring because you were paying no attention. Um, there's a couple of different things to think about. So let me just add a few more stitches. And I'm just doing, this is just the basic stitch. I suppose I could put an intermediate uh, tatting course on the books as well. I don't know if anybody would like that better than a beginning tatting. I thought somebody would sign up for it, but oh well. Um, so anyway, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven stitches on here right now. And um, there's two different schools of thought when you close a ring. One of them is that you just close the ring like this and you pull. The other one is that before you close the ring, you are supposed to take your shuttle and drop it back down through the ring 
because if you make a mistake, it can make it easier to um, fix. And that's called posting the shuttle. Um, what makes it easier to open a ring at this point, and again, remember, I'm using very, very large thread, and it's polyester, so this is going to make it easier for me to pull, um, pull apart, whereas when you're using cotton, it's not as easy. Um, if you have any kind of pico in your work, that's going to be the easiest place to um, pull your ring open. This one is going to open up reasonably well, just simply because I didn't fully close it, but I wanted to show you that whole posting difference. Um, the key to opening a ring that you have closed um, incorrectly or too early or whatever, is in um, being able to, and I'm gonna close this one all the way down, so there we go, closing it all the way down, is in being able to slide this area beneath the pico open a little bit. And again, remember, this is gonna slide really easy because this is polyester, it's not cotton. You can still do this though. See how there's this little space right here? Let me see if I have a hook too. Um, there's this space that's in between uh, the stitches that you can pull apart beneath the pico and this this space that's in between the stitches of course can I find a little hook when I want it never um, oh found one yay got one so there's a little hook that one's really much oh and a bead okay we'll put the bead back in this one's actually um much too small for what we're working with here, but would be appropriate for regular tatting thread. Um, so it's this, this core thread right here that is running inside your stitches on either side. This is the thread that you need to pull to loosen your ring back up. So if you can pull this, you'll be able to slide your stitches because that's what your ring is built on. And this is the problem is that sometimes your last half of your last stitch will flip. So if you can pull that out more, this is all very fiddly stuff. If you can pull that out more, then as you go to um, open your ring back up, you have less chance of it flipping the wrong way, which this one had, and tightening and closing your ring back down. So that's really the key. I'll slap a couple more picos in here and then show you that again. And the idea behind posting your shuttle when you finish a ring is that um, if you do make a mistake, there's two reasons, but one of them, one of them is if you make a mistake, that it is then easier to um, open your ring just because of the orientation of um, this ending point of your ring thread that gets pulled through. So I'm closing that. I closed it all the way down again, right? And remember, I'm demonstrating with polyester thread, so it's still going to be much, much easier to open these rings up with polyester than it is mm -hmm. with cotton. And that's what we tend to tat with, right? It's mostly cotton. So um, you can, I always go for the last pico in the line. Um, I just, that's I kind of my thing. So I always go for the last pico in the line. And the goal is just to kind of wiggle this open. And sometimes what I do is uh, I just sort of wiggle them apart a little bit. And here you can see that my stitches are being weird and they're kind of flipping around because again, you know, this is that last stitch. Um, and so I like to take this and make a bigger loop with it. There it is. So that, um, you know, it's just easier, easier as you go along. There you go. Because you can see that it's pulling that loop down again off that, that second half of that last stitch. So that is how you open up. Let me just check and make sure. Let's see, uh, you keep a needle. Yeah, keeping a needle in your kit is not a bad idea. Um, needles are great, awls are great. That would be A-W-L and awl. Um, I like, these are. this is a tiny, tiny little crochet hook that I keep in my kit. 
um, that I sometimes use for fixing mistakes. Um, picks on like the pick, the pick on your tatting shuttle is also very useful for helping to uh, fix those mistakes. So that's the biggest one. It, like it was years, years before I learned how to pull a ring open and fix a mistake after I'd already closed it. I do recommend practicing um, opening those rings with a much larger thread or a polyester thread and then transitioning to a cotton to try um, because again, it is much harder with cotton thread than it is with um, than it is with this polyester thread and let's see if I can show you that. Just make a quick ring. So I'm just going to make a really basic little mm -hmm. tatted ring here and we will make what we call a mistake in it, a deliberate mistake, whatever, and uh, see if we can get it pulled open. By the way, this is the um, Dreamlit shuttle, this guy. Really, really like it because it pops open and there's a bobbin, so you can like swap your colors um, really easily. You can just, you know, tuck like, put a little rubber band around your bobbin, tuck your bobbins in with your work. Um, and then you can use your shovel for something else. I really, really love these Dreamlets. We sell these in the shop. I cannot recommend them enough. Um, because I like post bobbins, uh, or post shuttles. And I love the fact that this is a post shuttle and a bobbin shuttle kind of combined. So I still get to, um, have that feeling of having a post shuttle, uh, but the freedom of having bobbins. So... Anyway, just a comment there. Love them. And I tend to default to my clovers, but only because I have so many clovers and I don't have as many of these dreamlets yet. Although, why? I could have them. I could have all of them that I want. All right, so here we are. Oh no, I made a mistake. And, um, you know, there was supposed to, whatever. I made a mistake, so I have to pull this open. So now, we are going to very carefully pop this space between my two picos open. See that nice little thread? This is our core thread that we're trying to get to. So we're gonna do this. I'm going to try to gently pull up a little more yarn, which is working. Now I'm going to try to separate the first and last stitch at the base of the ring. Worked, it worked, it worked. Coming along. And this is cotton. This is actually the Perlovka. I quite like this stuff too. It's it's definitely softer. It's softer than the Lizbeth for sure. Um, and I can also see that as I indicated, it often happens, the second half of my last stitch has flipped over. So I need to go in. There we go. I'm just going to loosen that guy up. That's always a key there, is that uh, probably gonna happen. All right, and now, now we are going to magically pull on this thread because this is the ring thread. If I can get it, there we go. This is just a matter of my fingers and tension and whatever. All right, and you just keep working on this. See if I can get it pulled all the way open. Other things being able to identify which threads are which. Okay, there we go. There we go. Got it back open. Nice. All right, and now I'll be able to, you know, fiddle with my stitches and whatever and keep opening it back up. And doodly oop de doo. There we go. Ring back open. So I took that all the way down, closed it all the way and opened it all the way back up. And the secret to that is in the space beneath the pico. It really is. The secret to that is the space beneath the pico. That's what, that's what makes a huge difference right there. Um, anyway, so I didn't fully close that one there. Opening rings definitely, definitely takes, um, a little skill, a little time, a little practice, but um, is an excellent tool to have in your repertoire so that you can um, successfully tat 
and fix your mistakes because you're going to make mistakes and that's normal and it's totally fine. Totally fine to make mistakes. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you'd sign up. Oh, awesome. Diana, I would love to have you in class. Yeah, I'm just going to move. It's a three week uh, lesson course. I'm just moving it. Um, I was supposed to start last Friday, so I'm just going to move it to, you know, this Friday and it'll just be three weeks in a row, three Fridays. We're doing video lessons. And yes, Cheryl, it is always good to look before you close the ring. I highly agree with that statement. Highly agree with that statement. Um, yeah, super fun. Really fun. I like tatting. I like tatting a lot. Um, I don't get to do nearly as much of it as I would like right now. So um, this is a paid pattern. So, you know, please don't like, you know, take a screenshot or whatever. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how... Um, how you know what to do on patterns. So this particular author um, has a difficulty level and she says this is a three star out of seven star level. Um, she says that you need two different shuttles and that you either need size 30 or size 40 thread. And this is a diagram. This is one of the things that I really love, like old, old tatting patterns. I don't know if I have one. Hang on. Um, old tatting patterns are, you know, written out. I have a ton of work baskets behind me. So I'm just going to grab an old work basket and see if one of these has, uh, to tat, page seven. There we go. Oh, it's a pretty one. So, um, this is the tatted pansy doily right here for, um, this old work basket. And what you might notice is that there's a lot of abbreviations and it's a ton of writing. And one of the things that I really, really love about what has happened with a lot of the, um, a lot of our needle crafts, and I do mean a lot of our needle crafts, is that uh, we no longer have to rely just on written directions, but we can use diagrams. And I know diagrams might be a little scary to some of you, but diagrams are usually much more accurate. We call them charts in knitting, it's diagrams for tatting. They're much easier to read and you can really see what the piece is supposed to look like. And it tells you where to start in here. So it tells you the red is the number of knots that she has, um, so the stitches. The green is the sequence. And uh, so you start with this ring, one, this ring here, which is um, a four pico eight pico four. That's why there's four eight four. And then there's a chain. So this is the second thing that you go to is the chain. And um, that one is a chain of five. And then in her second round, you start with this ring here and um, off you go. Anyway, so I just think it's much, much easier now to be able to read those patterns. And a lot of times what I do is I will actually take my written, uh, my old written tatting patterns and I will turn them into diagrams so that I can um, better read my tatting. Whoops, sorry. And uh, I was turning this back around so I can talk to you. And anyway, um, I, I really, really love that, a little high, um, I, can, I can read my knitting better because I can use a chart. I can read my crochet better because a lot of the crochet patterns use charts. I can read my tatting pattern better because it has a diagram. And um, I just, I, I love the visual representation. It really helps me to follow along with what I should be doing. I find it much easier to read than a really long string of text. Um, so that's one of the things that I think is really, really cool about the last like 30 years of um, pattern design for most of the crafts that I do. Uh, I also love the proliferation of PDF sewing patterns because I love being able to go in and just choose the size that I want, print it off, or use a projector. Have you seen projector sewing? Very tempted by that. And I have an extra projector. I just haven't um, quite set it up yet so that I can like shine it down onto my big table. I showed you guys all my workspace downstairs a few months ago, and but that's like part of my... Mm, plan for this coming year is to get the projector set up so I can do, um, and not all of them are set up for projector files. So you have to find the ones that are, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a really cool new innovation that you can do projector files and just 
like shine the projector onto your fabric, cut out your fabric, and then you don't waste any paper and I don't have to store tons and tons of paper patterns either. I think that's really awesome. And I do like printing off my knitting patterns. Tina and I talked about this. There's a, a new website, it's called Ribbler, no E in, on the end there, um, where like you can go in and uh, you know buy your patterns, but you can only access them uh, electronically. You cannot print a physical PDF and um, and I'm just like, I, I print PDFs. Like I printed, I printed my diagram, partially because I wanted to show you, but partially because I want to be able to reference it. I wanna make notes on it. Um, I am going to try to make this with that really fine uh, sim thread. So very thin green sim thread, um, kind of as a run through and, you know, and I, I want to be able to like check my work and see it and I can do that best with a diagram that's printed. So, um, you know, I reuse diagrams, I keep them. I very rarely like toss uh, charts and diagrams from patterns. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a personal thing. I know some people really prefer digital. I kind of span the gap. I mean, I'm not super young and I'm not super old and I kind of like both. And sometimes I will just work most of a pattern from the PDF, but I might print the charts so that I can, you know, use my highlighter tape or uh, something of that manner and I like that I don't have to I don't have to wake up my piece of paper like I have to wake up my laptop um yeah and see and Cheryl you've used all three ways that the pattern's written yeah and and it's there's nothing wrong with having a written pattern it's nice to have the written pattern sometimes it's good to use it as a double check sometimes there are people who just much prefer reading it one stitch at a time but the way that I knit and for my personal style, I really love having, you know, I really love having my charts and my diagrams. Anyway, that was like a really big digression there, people. That was a good one. That was a really big digression. So if you want to sign up for the tatting class, the tatting class is now starting this Friday night. Um, it'll be at 7 o'clock my time, which is central. So 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 Mountain, 5... Um, Pacific and that's that's when I've set up all of my classes personally. I'm work, I'm doing them on Fridays They're at seven o'clock my time so that my husband can watch my child and I can take all my stuff downstairs and go hide away in either the guest room or the office <laughs> So that um, I can teach and I'm not interrupted every two seconds so um, That's the plan uh, and I will be you know teaching my tatting um, and we'll probably be doing it uh, either through Google Meet or through Zoom. I haven't fully decided which one we're going to use yet, but one of those two. Um, yeah, and there's all the requirements on um, on the Black Sheep Fiber Emporium website. So you can go check that out, check out all the classes that we're offering. Tina is also working on putting together a steaked mug uh, class where you do a, a mug cozy and you get to practice color work and steaking and make a cute little mug cozy. So look for that, it'll be on the books uh, soon. Probably March-ish will be my guess. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely be watching for it so that um, you can make sure you get your kit in time so that you can knit along and, and do your things there. Um, what else did she talk about? She was gonna do the steaked mug and there was something else, I don't know, she'll tell you Friday. Um, and remember, I won't be here Wednesday because I'm having dental work done. Um, because dental work. Necessary, but not fun. Oh, anyway, okay, so year of self-care. How's everybody doing on their year of self-care? If you don't know anything about it, go to our website. We have a link and a logo on the front page. Um, and if you've been with me, you've heard this spiel. I'm really sorry, you're gonna hear it again. Um, it's, we're doing the Crafters Year of Self-Care and um, it's all about you. So you set monthly goals. January is your special stash project. So um, it's the special skein of yarn, uh, kit pattern, roving fabric, whatever, that you tucked away in your stash that was too special to use and I want you to use it. So that's the idea. Oh, sh oh Cheryl, do you like this purple one? This one? This is actually a Vera Bradley make, uh, not makeup, a uh, jewelry bag. Um, and it kind of works for my tatting. My mom bought it for me for jewelry, but it has like, uh, zipper, zipper pouches here and it has a couple of, um, it's got like a pocket, just an open pocket on each end. And then the center has um, like a little snap down bar for your rings, but um, I just kind of use it as a tatting bag. Uh, it's not 
ideal because um, I do have to be careful that I don't catch thread in my zipper, um, which I have done a couple of times. Um, but it holds a ton of projects because it's small. And then I love pockets. I have a thing for pockets, people. Pockets in dresses, pockets in pants, pockets. This one, this is a cardigan without pockets. It should have pockets because all cardigans should have pockets. I like pockets. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and I like lots of pockets in my bags because I like to take all my little stuff and put it in there. And like even, you know, I, I keep little zippy pouches of notions. Um, in all of my project bags because most of my project bags don't have pockets. So this is like my my extra pocket, right? Um, and this one is the one that I keep in here. So I put tatting stuff in here. And if I want to and I don't have a ball of thread, I can just throw this in my purse and take it with me to work on. Anyway, um, so for my year of self-care, I got all of my yarn spun and washed. It's all washed now. So this was my goal was to spin and wash enough yarn for a hand spun hand knit sweater. So this was step one. Step two is um, I have to get these wound and I'm not going to wind all of them. I'm going to wind them one at a time as I use them. And um, the first skein that I'm going to use is this one with a little dab of purple in it. Um, Cause I love purple. Uh, and they're all three ply. I spun them on my Kromsky Sonata, which we do sell in shops. So if you've been looking for um, a fabulous Kromsky Sonata and you tell me that you bought it because you watched one of my videos, I will throw in like eight ounces of PCC roving for you to learn with uh, for your brand new Kromsky Sonata. Um, actually, if you buy any of the Kromsky wheels through us, I'll throw in eight ounces of fiber. We'll send you eight ounces of fiber for free because you bought a wheel from us. Um, and all you have to say is, you know, hey Kelly, where's my fiber? And I'll get it for you. Um, I really, really love my new magnetic flyer head. So I spun all of these on my wheel, my Kromsky Sonata wheel with the magnetic flyer head, standard bobbins. Um, they're all three ply. They're all at least 450 yards. They're so squishy because it's BFL and silk and I love them. Uh, so my next step is I have to get this one wound so that I can start swatching. And yes, I do have to wash my swatch because I'm making a sweater. So if you're making a sweater, you always need to wash your swatch. Uh, honestly, you should be watching, you should be swatching and washing whenever you do a project. Um, because your gauge changes and uh, your project will block differently based on how it's washed and the fiber that's contained in it. So just an important little point there. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, February is my treat month and uh, you think you need to make a bag with pockets. You're I'm too far away. Why am I too far away, Cheryl? Am I too far away from you? I could show you my bag again. Um, anyway, so that's my goal is that, um, you know, now that I have it spun that, oh, what is this head? Oh. So the Symphony doesn't have this um, new magnetic flyer head, but the Fantasia and the Sonata, so those are the um, more modern um, upright wheels. Both of those, they have introduced, oh, you're in Canada. Well, that's okay that you're in Canada. Yeah, I remember you said you were in Canada. You're my Canadian friend. I'm also really bad with like locations. Um, so let me see if I can pop this off. I have my wheel right here. So th this is the magnetic flyer head um, for the Sonata. They only make it for the Sonata and the, the Fantasia right now. But um, basically there is a really strong magnet right here that connects um, your flyer and, um, hang on, I can't do this left-handed. I have to do it right-handed. There we go. So there's a really strong magnet that connects these two pieces. There's a little notch here um, that kind of catches on the flyer head and then they just come apart. But it doesn't come apart while you're spinning because there's these really strong magnets and they click, you know, anyway. Uh, it's pricey to ship there. Cheryl, you know, we always try to get you the cheapest shipping that we can. Um, Tina works really hard on that because we know that it's expensive to ship to Canada. So if there's something that you really want, if you pop us an email, we can try to get you a price quote um, and get your shipping down, just, just so you know. Like we try, we really do try. Um, anyway, love this thing, like adore this thing. Um, it's super, super easy then to just pop your bobbin on and change your bobbin. And, uh, 
Yeah, like I really, really love it. I really love it. In fact, I think I put an Instagram video up talking about how much I love it and how easy it is to change the bobbin out. Um, so yeah, this is the flyer head that I use on my Sonata now because I love it so much. I, I actually have not gone back to my standard flyer head at all because I love it that much. Um, so yeah, I know, I know. Uh, what should we talk about next week? That is something that, that we need to set. Um, I was kind of thinking uh, we could do maybe a little bit of a darning class again. We could talk about fixing holes or um, maybe fixing up, uh, like, I have this pair of jeans. And yes, I know, they aren't exactly expensive. But I love them, and they're really well broken in. And, but I have this thing, it's, it's called Thigh Rub. And I have worn a hole in one of my very favorite pairs. So I need to do some patching. And I thought about this. Um, maybe we needed to do some more darning and patching on some of our knitwear. So... I don't know, what do you think? Monday maybe we should do some darning and then maybe Wednesday, um, you know, Wednesday we could always talk more spinning. You know, I like to talk spinning. So I can show you more about the Kromsky Sonata. We can talk about that. Um, and the magnetic flyer head because I do love it. Um, so that's, that's an option. It's not something that we have to do, but that's an option. Um, my February treat myself for my year of self-care, I, um, I already ordered fabric. It should be in by February. That's kind of my thing. Um, how do I label my hand spun? Oh, so actually this was Shannon. <laughs> Shannon said, um, hey, you need to get those Tyvek, uh, Tyvek strips. So this is, uh, this is like honestly this is one of those tyvek like wristbands and i just chose blue because i like blue and i can find it um but the white ones are perfectly fine and you i just write on them with a sharpie marker and you can see the the marker is still pretty clear even though this went through the wash and dry cycle for me um not like on my washer i hand washed this and dried it but i'm not gentle when i do it so um that's just a tyvek wristband that's it's a tyvek wristband and i bought like a hundred of them or something because I figured I'd be spinning quite a bit and I think I've already used like at least 15 of them. Um, but that, I mean, that that was the simple way to do it and, and Shannon recommended it and she was right. So yes, they stay on even when you wash them. So it makes it really easy to, you know, wash your hand spun, but um, Keep it tagged and the thing that i know i did make sure is that um when you do it so you have you know your hank of yarn you want to make sure that you go around the hank of yarn not around both hanks both sides of the hank because then it just pops off of an end so you want to make sure you're you're looping it through the loop and um and yeah i mean it's sharpie marker on a tyvek um on a tyvek wristband so it's a great way to uh, keep track of your hand spun and keep it nice and tidy. And, and I thank Shannon for that information, um, for sharing that information because she was completely correct. So, um, yeah, it's great. It's lovely. And then it's there. The other thing is I like having, um, I always take my, let me put that. I always take like my tag and I put it in the middle of my ball when I wind it. Um, even when I wind for other people, this is something that I do so that it doesn't go on walkabout as easily. Um, so I can also take my wristband and stick it in the middle again. Same idea so that I have all my information and it doesn't, you know, walk away as easily. I mean, I still lose the tags sometimes, but um, for the most part, those tags stay in and then I always know what that yarn is. Um, and I have tons of my little balls of leftover, you know, yarns where I have that. So anyway, um, I hope you're enjoying that year of self-care. Please make sure that you're posting on social media, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, um, whatever, wherever you post, YouTube. I don't care if you want to do it on YouTube. You just need to share a picture of what you're working on. Make sure that you're tagging us. You don't have to finish anything. We don't expect to finish projects. Um, we just want you to start so that you are enjoying yourself and your crafting because, um, you know, crafting is something that really matters to me for my mental health. And I'm sure because you're watching this, it matters to you too. So, uh, make sure that you are sharing those. Remember we are doing monthly contests and we are giving prizes and they will be themed to whatever it is that you're working on. 
So if you're quilting, we'll make sure we send you something for quilting. And if you're knitting, we'll send you something for knitting. If you're tatting, we'll send you something for tatting if you win the contest. And the, all you have to do is make a public post to social media and tag us with either BSFE or Black Sheep Fiber Emporium for the hashtags, or you can use the at symbol and tag us, a Black Sheep Fiber, Black Sheep Fiber Emporium on most places, so we can find it so we know you entered. That's really, that's what a lot of that is. And tell your friends about it, invite them to join. It's never too late. They can join at any point during the year. You don't have to do the whole year. You could do two months and then drop out. We just want you to enjoy it and try it a little bit. Um, I mean, we hope you'll do the whole year because it's fun and, and I tried to make fun themes, but if you don't, we understand. We understand. So anyway, um, Tina's going to announce the um, January planning winner um, either on Facebook uh, when she does her video or maybe before then, but she's going to announce that. Uh, so she did this special contest for the people that were you know, planning their year and posted their plan. And then um, we're going to have a separate contest at the end of the month. Oh, she says, Tori, Tony. Tony is the planning winner. Tony Pruch. 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 I don't know how to say that. That's not good. Tina, you made me say it badly on video. Oh, well. Um, yeah. And then, uh, so I got to announce it. That was exciting. Uh, at the end of the month, remember, we're going to pull another contest winner for a separate contest just because you posted something. You just have to post it and say, this is for my year of self-care. And tag us. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Super easy. Um, anyway. Uh, what else do I need to talk to you about? I think that's it for now. So we'll be back next week and um, we'll talk darning on Monday. We'll talk spinning again on Wednesday. If there's a theme that you want me to talk about, just tell me in the comments, pop me an email. Um, I'm always open to uh, suggestions. And remember, I do this twice a week. So, you know, I need two ideas a week, two ideas that we talk about every single week. So anyway, um, until next time, Please take care of yourself. So, um, you know, wear your mask, wash your hands, physically distance. Um, take care of your physical, mental, and emotional health. Keep crafting. Remember that crafting is really good for your mental health. It helps to relax you. There's tons of studies out there that prove this. So, um, you know, until next time, until next Monday, because remember Wednesday, I'm not here. I have that icky dental work. Uh, so next Monday, I'll see you all again. Um, so yeah, until then, until then, please take care of yourself and um, keep crafting and enjoy your crafting. And Diana, thank you for the suggestion. It was fun to show you how to open um, a ring today. And yeah, um, Tina says that she'll be back on Friday. She said... Um, if, if she can manage it, she'll try to be here on Wednesday, but she'll definitely be here on Friday. And, and I'll be back next week on Monday. Like I said, we'll do some darning. So I'll update the events headers so that uh, you can see what we're planning for those days. So, um, you know, join, join self-care. All you have to do is post something and tag us. Join self-care, um, you know, this month, special stash, special stash project, so. It's just something that you always said that you would use, that you bought, and you never did because it was too special. Well, it's not too special. You need to enjoy it. So go do it. And I'll see you next time.